In this video, we're going to show you how to create music using samples inside your computer using Cubase. There are an infinite number of ways for you to be creative with samples, and this video will demonstrate just some of the techniques at your disposal. So feel free to experiment during this tutorial and beyond. Below this video, we've provided you with a link which you can use to download the samples or sounds that we'll be using in this video so that you can work along with this tutorial step by step. Please click on the link below to begin the download. On Windows, open your File Explorer and go to your Downloads folder. Once the download is complete, right click on the zipped folder and select Extract All. Ensure that Show Extracted Files when complete is checked and hit Extract. On a Mac, open your Finder and go to the Downloads folder. Once the download is complete, please double click on the zipped folder to unzip it. We recommend moving this folder to your documents so that you don't accidentally delete the samples if you clear out your Downloads folder. On Windows, I'm going to create a new folder and name it Samples and copy the Focusrite samples into that folder. That way, if you download samples in the future, you can just add them to this samples folder. On a Mac, I'm going to create a new folder and name it samples and copy the Focusrite samples into that folder. That way, if you download samples in the future, you can just add them to this samples folder. All of the samples in this pack were kindly provided by Amplify Sounds. You can find out more about Amplify and their range of iOS applications at amplifymusic.com. There are two types of samples that you'll find in this folder, loops and one-shots. Loops are pieces of music like a drum beat or a melody, and you can use these loops as building blocks when creating your tracks. We can quickly identify loops in this sample pack because they have the tempo information in the file name, for example, 105 BPM. On a PC, double click on a loop, like this drum loop, to listen to it. On a Mac, single click on one of the loops and press spacebar to preview the loop. One shots, on the other hand, are individual sounds, like a single drum hit or a single bass hit, which you can use to build up your own patterns. As mentioned earlier, you can identify the loops quickly because they have tempo information in the file name, for example, 174 BPM. One shots don't have this information. You may have noticed that these packs also contain a musical key in their folder name. To make things easy in these packs, all of the samples that contain pitch information, like bass lines, vocals, and melodies, are all in the same key. For example, in the Jazzy Electronic Pack, all of the bass lines, vocals, and melodies are in C minor. In other sample packs that you'll find online, the individual samples will contain pitch information in the file name, because there'll likely be a mixture inside the pack. Earlier, we showed you how to set your Scala as the audio device in Cubase. This means that we'll be able to listen to what's playing back from Cubase through either headphones or speakers connected to our Scala. To recap, if you need to be working at a specific sample rate, like 96 kHz for example, then please open Focusrite Control, click on the Settings cog, and select your desired sample rate. You can then close Focusrite Control and open Cubase. You may see this dialog box when you open Cubase, which asks you to select the audio driver for your hardware. If so, then please select your Scala or Focusrite USB ASIO from this menu and then select OK. Now open a blank session. 
your Scala is now set up as the playback device for Cubase. If you didn't see the dialog box when opening Cubase, then we'll need to go in and set the Scala as your audio device. Go to Studio, Studio Setup, VST Audio System, and select your Scala from this drop down menu. We want to be able to access the sample pack that you just downloaded from inside Cubase. To do this, open the media bay by coming to media and selecting media bay. Under this computer, navigate to where you saved the sample pack. Right click on each of the folders inside the Focusrite samples pack and select add favorite. Once you've done this, you can now exit this window and click on the Show Write Zone button just over here. We can have the media bay open on the right-hand side to quickly access our favorites, which now contains all of the Focusrite samples. Select Media, and if you don't see the Favorites button, then select the Home button and you'll see Favorites just here. You'll then see the packs included with the download, which you can click on and then audition the loops by clicking on them. You can press spacebar to stop the previews. Choose one of these four packs that you want to work with for now, because each of the packs contains loops that are at the same tempo and in the same key to make them easy to work with. Once you've chosen one of these folders, you need to set the tempo of Cubase to match the tempo of the loops that you'll be using. You can see the tempo of the loops on every loop inside the pack. Single click on the tempo in the bottom bar of Cubase and then type in the tempo that you want to use. You can then drag these loops into Cubase and start using them. You can zoom in and out using the G for golf and H for hotel keys on your keyboard. You can now begin to add different types of loops like bass loops, melodies, percussion loops, and the extra loops. If you want to rename a track, you can double click on the track name, type in the new name and press enter. And if you want to play the project from the start of the timeline, you can press the comma key on your keyboard to return to the start of the timeline. If you want to play a certain section in a loop, hover over the top bar so that the pencil appears and then select the section that you want to loop. Then click on the loop icon in the bottom bar. If you'd like to control the volume of each of these loops, ensure that you can see this bottom section by clicking on the show lower zone button and then select mix console just here. The volume faders will control the volume. and you're also able to add effects to the tracks that you have selected. Click on the track that you want to add an effect to, and make sure that the inspector is showing by clicking the show hide left zone button here, go to inserts, click an empty slot, and go to reverb, select Roomworks SE. You can now see the reverb plugin that you have loaded onto this track. You can select presets just up here, like the vintage plate reverb, for example. The only control that you need to worry about is the mix. This allows you to control how much reverb is being applied to the sound. 100 means that you're hearing a lot of reverb, and zero means that you're hearing no reverb, and you can adjust this to your liking. You can then close this reverb plugin by clicking the cross in the corner. And if you want to reopen that plugin to make adjustments, you can click it just here. 
You can also experiment with adding more effects from these menus like delay, EQ and more. Now feel free to experiment with the techniques that we've shown you in this video. When you're ready to export so that you have a WAV file of your song, turn off the loop by clicking here, press Ctrl A on a PC or Command A on a Mac to select everything that you want to export, go to File, Export, Audio Mixdown. Choose a name for your file and choose where you'd like to save it. Leave these settings as they are, unless you need to change them for any specific reason, and then select Perform Export. You can now progress on from this video, and we'd love to know whether you're up and running with your new Scala. If you are, that's great, but if you still require some assistance, then we can direct you towards our support team.